That's why the whole Colorado Plateau is starting to lift up now. Because it was refrigerated by yeah. this, this low super low angle um, Farallon plate, and then it, as it got uh, uh, cooled and it starts sinking away, the mantle would flow in, and then the whole. Uh, got more buoyant. Yeah, it's got a lot more buoyant. Up where I went to uh, college, Humboldt State, they're very possessive about their plates up there. And the little southern corner of the Juan de Fuca plate, uh, all my professors refer to as the Gorda plate. So it's just a little, it's basically, it's just a little, uh, a little piece, a little southern piece yeah, of the Juan de Fuca plate. Granite, diorite, or gabbro? Granite. No dark minerals here. What's the two most common minerals you see um, in this rock here? About 16. Is that a little higher than the last spot? Yeah. Yeah, by how much? Point six. Like 15.9? No, <laughs> no, no. no. Because that Two. answer, the number, our last answer was not one, it was point one. Right. And this is not point 16, this is really 16. Oh. So, so it's about 16.3. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what'd you get on that guy? This one was actually much higher. So it's, it, it's actually. Wow, that was true. This one here is 54. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. I think we got the winner. 70. Woo! 80. Stop! Whoa! <laughs> You're killing me. Now, once I've done that, once I've kind of lined up the two areas, <laughs> and I've gotten the two to coincide, I can now pull my compass off and now I can read it. And what I'm, what I'm uh, reading here is called the strike. You're done. I got this. Oh, good. Okay. This is almost identical to how it's oriented, the way this rock is sitting. It's almost perfect. Perfect. Let's do that. <clears throat> okay. About how we had it. Good. Okay. Now this, uh, the way we have to read this, you kind of have to do a little subtraction in your head. So how many degrees in a circle? 360. 360. And uh, what I'm going to recommend is that we use the quadrant bearing. Is that okay with my colleagues, Ray and Gina? Sure. Okay, as opposed to an azimuth <laughs> bearing? Yeah. Okay. So when you're taking a strike, the first letter in the strike is always going to be N. Guess what N stands for? North. North. And then we're going to go so many degrees, either east or north of, or west of north. So and north. And then I'm going to start here. And then notice then that I'm going this direction to where the white line on the compass hits the black part of the body. And to tell which direction that is, just keep going and you'll see the W. So in this case, it's north so many degrees. We're going to read that in a minute, east or west. So the strike is going to be north, blah, 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 west. Now we're going to fill in the blah, blah, blah to get the angle. Okay, so uh, the way these are calibrated is uh, uh, they're labeled in 20 degree increments, and so each little tick mark, small tick mark is 2 degrees, so that would be 10 degrees, 20, 30, and I'm getting about 36, roughly. So I would say, well just what I got, I want you to do it, don't just write down what I got. But what I got was about north 36 west for the strike. Now, let me show you how to get the dip. You kind of have to make, uh, let's see, I always have to make sure if we put it on. So once you've written down the strike, then you're going to take your compass, and I just line it up so the W points to that white bar, and you'll see why I did that in a minute. <clears throat> Everybody see that? And then uh, what we're now going to measure is kind of the angle of tilt. 
and uh, just just right here, just kind of showing me spatially, uh, roughly how much is that tilt angle? Is it just a little bit, or is it almost 90 degrees here on this on this rock? Almost 90. Yeah, not quite. It's gonna be, it's gonna be something like that. So that's what's called the dip. It's just think of the angle as downward tilt. And there's sort of two things that we want to take note of here. The dip angle, that's just the angle itself. And then the compass direction that our layered rocks are dipping downward towards. So we have the dip angle and the dip direction. So in this case, we'll measure the dip angle, but let's remind ourselves, north, south, east, west, what's the dip direction gonna be if things are oriented downward that direction? East. Roughly, roughly east. Our strike was northwest, and so if you go 90 degrees from northwest, our, our dip direction is going to be northeast. Uh -huh. Let's call it an inclinometer. When you hold it flat, if you look kind of through to the other side, you'll see some red numbers. And right now, when I hold it flat, uh, that's reading a dip angle of zero. It's flat, and you'll see a little red zero inside. Now, guess what happens to the dip angle as I tilt my compass? Increases. It increases. What would the dip angle be, say, about here? Almost 90. 90. What would it be here? <laughs> Zero. What would it be about here? 45. What would it be, you know, roughly about here? 60. 80 something. 